Hi, okay. My name is Michael, and today I'll be doing a presentation on dynamic programming. So dynamic programming is actually a pretty big field, a big topic to talk about. And you really can't talk about it in 10 minutes, so I guess a better way to phrase this is, it's just more of an uh, <laughs> uh, intro to dynamic programming. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so for this presentation, I'll be talking about what dynamic programming is. I'll give you some examples of how it's used. And I'll give you some quick tips to become a dynamic programming master. So yeah, what is dynamic programming? Well, this is actually something that's really hard for me to do. So I'm actually going to delegate this to people who have done studies of this for a long time. So here's a quote from Skina's uh, The Algorithm Design Manual. Dynamic programming gives us a way to design custom algorithms that systematically search all possibilities, thus guaranteeing correctness while storing results to avoid computing, thus providing efficiency. I guess the key here is that this does guarantee correctness. It's not a heuristic program. Oh, sorry, it's not a heuristic algorithm. And yeah, it, you can probably tell it's kind of brute force in that it searches through all possibilities. And you might think that it's a little bit similar to divide and conquer, but it's not. Basically, the difference between divide and conquer and dynamic programming is that dynamic programming deals with overlapping subproblems. So if a problem kind of relies on the solution of something that, hap that you've already kind of done, that's kind of what dynamic programming deals with. Yeah. So I guess, how do you do dynamic programming? Okay, so I'm going to be talking about two different ways to do it. And uh, one of them is memoization and recursion. I do not misspell memorization, it is memoization. And the other one is tabulation. So memoization is kind of the idea of just caching the output of a function. Now, so you're probably wondering what, what exactly will this do for us? Well, if we combine that with recursion, we can do it in order to optimize our function. So this is probably a little bit confusing, so I'll give an example. So a good example for this is our favorite sequence, the Fibonacci sequence. <laughs> and yeah. So here's kind of how we would code Fibonacci if we were, I don't know, an intern or something. <laughs> you probably just write in, you just write in a simple one-line solution. It looks nice, but it's a horrible algorithm. So why is it horrible? Well, let's look at the call stack of how this function is running. So this is, so the node just represents that Fibonacci is being run on n, right? And it's going to be calling Fibonacci n minus 1 and n minus 2. OK, so it's fine right now. But then n minus 1, we'll call it on n minus 2 and n minus 3. And there's a problem here. There's redundancy. We're calling n Fibonacci on n minus 2 multiple times, actually. <laughs> So our solution is to memoize. So here is a, I guess, adjusted version of our uh, Fibonacci function. And basically, all we're doing is we're storing our solutions into an array. I guess for most memoized functions, we would start into a hash map instead. But for simplicity's sake, we'll just store it into an array for now. And so yeah, we're basically just storing it. And every time we call the function, we're checking, hey, did we already do this? If we did, we just return where it was in the array. And yeah, you can kind of see that it's a lot different when you look at the time complexity. So the simple recursive method is an exponentially growing function, whereas the memoized version is just a linear time equation. And you can kind of see the, uh, the call stack for each of them and how it cuts off on the memoized side. Yeah. So the big points to take from memoization is that it reduces redundancy, and it caches the results. So for the other method is tabulation, which is a bottom-up method, which uses a matrix to store subproblems, basically. So I guess this is kind of hard to explain just from this definition. So I think examples are the best way to teach dynamic programming. So let's look at another example, uh, minimum edit distance. So you're probably wondering what minimum edit distance is. So it's the number of changes you need to make to a string to get it to be another string. So how many edits 
or insertions or deletions of each character. So here's the code for it. It's a little, it's a lot, so I'm just gonna point out what the kind of important part. We're creating a table of n by n, which will store, actually I'll just <laughs> point out the most important part of the uh, algorithm for now, which is that we are using previous values within our table to get the next table entries. We're iterating through the table and using previous values within our table to get the uh, solution for that entry. So this is probably still a little bit confusing, so there's a, we'll visualize it. So let's say we're trying to find the difference between cat, the word cat and scar. And this is kind of the table that our, our function creates. And we can pre-fill these values because, because um, we're, these are checking between empty strings. Uh, I guess if you're confused of what each index is doing, each index is storing, um, for example, the highlighted box stores the minimum edit distance between the words CA and SCA. So each index will correspond like that. Yeah. And each index will be calculated using that function. So we can kind of just walk through, quickly walk through how it runs through. So from here, we can see it's taking the, the diagonal. Yeah, it's taking the diagonal and it's checking between the two characters if they're the same and adding one to it if, if, they're, um, if they're not the same, which they aren't. And it kind of just goes through the whole table iteratively doing that, as you can see. And we know the last column is the difference between the word cat and scar. So once we reach that final index, we have the answer and the algorithm is complete. So yeah, you're probably thinking, how do we do this? Like, where, <laughs> where does this come from? Well, the answer to that is Levenstein, but that's probably not the question you're asking. <laughs> but yeah, that is his algorithm. <laughs> so you're probably asking, so how do I figure out a dynamic algorithm? Well, before I do that, I kind of want to talk about the difference between memoization and tabulation. Uh, this kind of, it's a little buzzwordy, top down, bottom up approach, but I think the main idea to take from this is that memoization computes only the values that it requires, whereas tabulation goes through the whole um, table and fills it out. Yeah. So yeah, how to. So the first thing about, the most important part about dynamic programming is that it is an optimization technique. You, when you're doing a problem, you don't go into Fibonacci thinking, oh yeah, I'll store every value. You think, okay, I just need to find Fib1, N minus 1, Fib N minus 2. So you figure it out recursively, and then you can kind of see where you can optimize your algorithm. And another interesting thing about that is that dynamic program might not be the most optimal way. So don't always just default to dynamic program. Um, well, the whole idea of dynamic programming is that we're, we're taking large problems and checking the smaller problems within it. And from that, we get the answer from that. So you kind of want to figure out, hey, do I need smaller answers to, do I need all these answers to, uh, answers to sub-problems to solve the bigger problem? And then from that, you can kind of figure out, okay, what substructure do I need in an array to store this, a table, a matrix, et cetera. And then, of course, you have to pay attention to any repetitive function calls. This will help, this will be used for like memoization and yeah. And I think the biggest problem, that the, the th biggest thing to help for dynamic programming is to practice it. You kind of have to just understand, prob do a lot of problems, see, hey, how can I optimize this? How can it, how does it, uh, how does it work? Um, and yeah. I guess practicing practice makes perfect. And yeah, I guess that's for all. Oh.